So we'll do the red blood cell disorders. We'll do the biggest one first, which is all the anemia. But it's very organized, and I want you to see the organization. It's going to make your life easier when you take on these things. And then we'll deal with the, so this is a decrease of red blood cells. Then we'll talk about an increase of the red blood cells, and then the white blood cells are going to be done. Okay? So these are just general symptoms of just someone who's got anemia. Now, there's a lot of different forms of anemia. We're going to go through them all. Uh, some of them, it's, um, it's for all anemia. Some of them are more specific. Like, you're not going to get, let's say, iron deficiency anemia, and you're going to get you know, a splenomegaly, like your, your spleen is not going to get enlarged. It's kind of putting everything in there. Okay? You may not get jaundice with someone who's got iron deficiency. So I just, routine, but there's some routine, there's some regular symptoms that you get with everything, right? You're going to get fatigue, you're going to get tiredness, low blood pressure, that kind of stuff, shortness of breath. Those are just ones you always get, um, even if your blood pressure goes down with, with those things, okay? Um, all right, so there's three basic reasons for having anemia, okay? First one is you decrease the red blood cell synthesis. So we'll go back to that thing. Just giving you numbers. If 100 red blood cells are made, 100 will be destroyed. And you've got an equal amount. All right, just the way cerebral spinal fluid is supposed to be too, right? Amount made means the amount is being destroyed. All right? If you're going to only make 50, but you're still going to lose 100, that's what's happening here. There's something wrong with the synthesis of red blood cells. What can go wrong with that? Well, a few different things. That's where the different things are coming in. Renal failure. If you have renal failure, you're not going to secrete EPO, right? Erythropoietin. So that's an easy thing going on. You have kidney disease. So these people will have to be put on some sort of synthetic erythropoietin, because that's why they're not making red blood cells, because there's no erythropoietin. Isn't there slight like, differences in our Well, 10% of it is made in the liver, 90% yeah. of it is in the kidney. Yeah. Yep. So it's actually made in both places. Now, let me just ask you something about this, erythropoietin. What actually secretes, what's the stimulus that actually secretes erythropoietin? Be careful with this one, because a lot of people would get this wrong. What, what actually stimulates erythropoietin to get secreted? What's going to stimulate that? It should be on your chart. That's where it's coming from, but what's telling the kidney to secrete it? No, what? That's the answer I don't want. But I want you to say that because that's what most people say. What was your answer? Yes. A decrease of oxygen is going to tell the kidney to secrete the erythropoietin. Now, what she said was, was a good answer, and it does happen, okay? What she said was a decrease of red blood cells will actually, well, yes. If you have a decrease of red blood cells, that means you have a decrease of oxygen. That decrease of oxygen is going to tell the kidney to secrete erythropoietin. Now, where's the difference coming in? Okay, let me give you an example. In someone who, you're, you're, li you're living here at sea level, okay, and you've got a good amount of red blood cells, you've got a good amount of oxygen. Now I want to move up to the Rocky Mountains in Denver. Now, I have good red blood cells here, I got what I supposed to, but when you move higher in altitude, the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure drops, which means that the oxygen levels drop in the air. So there's not much oxygen that can be pushed into your system. But you have a good amount of red blood cells going up there. Does that make sense? But in that case, you're not taking in as much oxygen as you should because it's hard to get that air or that oxygen in your body. So what happens here is that when you move up there to a higher level, your body senses that there's a decrease of oxygen that's going to tell your kidney to increase red blood cells. 
to grab onto, making a bigger net, try and grab onto whatever oxygen is out there. There's a whole list of different acclimations that your body does, and it takes about seven to ten days for your body to acclimate that new altitude. But that's one of the things that happens. So you have this transitional polycythemia that's going to happen when you move up there. And that's an appropriate response. So it's not because of a decrease in red blood cells. I mean, that is a reason, but that's because there's low oxygen that's in your blood. So I don't want you to fall for, hint, hint, that answer about the red blood cells. I'm glad she said that because that's usually the most common answer I get. But it's because of the low oxygen. Okay? Does that make sense? Even if you have, let's say, emphysema, you have low oxygen. You have a good amount of red blood cells, but you don't have a, you don't have a good amount of oxygen in your body. So then you start making more red blood cells. Okay? Is that clear about that? Okay. Other reasons that you have a decrease of red blood cell synthesis. Bone marrow failure. For some reason, you're taking medications that are destroying the bone marrow. The place, the factories, where the red blood cells are being made. So it could be due to overcrowding of cells due to leukemia. If I use BM, it's not bowel movement. <laughs> okay? BM, you're going to see quite often, it's bone marrow. Okay? It's going to be quite often, I'm going to use that here. So you have metastases to the bone marrow, radiation and toxins that we call aplastic uh, anemia. All right, and I'll talk about that too. That destroys the bone marrow. And the other thing is that you have a decrease of raw materials. You just are not taking in vitamin B12. You're not taking folic acid. You're not taking iron, which is needed to make red blood cells. If I was going to make a bag of potato chips, if you don't have potatoes, you're not and potatoes or oil. You're not going to make potato chips. It's not going to happen. You need the raw materials. So these, all three things over here, are going to decrease the red blood cell synthesis. Either you have kidney failure, you have bone marrow failure, or there's a decrease of raw materials. Now, there's subtypes of all this that we'll go over. So. Why do you take folic acid when you're pregnant? Folic, we talked about that. There's neural two defects. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, right? The neural two defects for folic acid, right? That makes sure it's in your... Um, Yes, but the spine. Just make sure that the, the spine actually closes, you know, spina bifida. It's a different reason. It's a different reason. Although, it's needed to make DNA synthesis, and that's where it's coming in for both of these. There's a different reason for that. Okay, questions about this one? Right? Okay. Then, other ways you get anemia, maybe just making defective red blood cells. Sickle cell comes in there, and a few other things. They're just not formed right. And then these will actually start breaking up and causing hemolysis. We'll talk about those. The other thing um, is, is so sickle cell anemia and spherocytosis. We'll talk about those. And then if you have an increase of blood loss or RBC loss. So if you're, making a, if you're supposed to be making 100 red blood cells, but now someone cut off your arm and now blood is pouring out that way, you're losing all those red blood cells. So 100 coming in and 40, go, or let's say uh, 300 going out. It doesn't make, you know, it's, it's not in sync. So these are really the only three ways you can get anemia. So if you think to yourself, if someone, one of your family members has anemia, and you don't know what the cause is, or you don't know what, the, uh, what, what it's actually called, you just think to yourself, well, we've got to think of reasons that you have a decrease of RB, red blood cell synthesis. Maybe you're making defective RBCs. And this is pretty easy to figure out because they're all genetic, and you would know when you were born. And then you also, also think you have an increase of red blood cell loss. And then we do subtypes of this. That's what I'm saying. It's very organized. And this I got from another book. But it's showing you the same similar thing. You could either get anemic because renal failure. You could have a bone marrow problem or red blood cell defects. Or you don't have the raw materials. Or you just have a loss of all the red blood cells hemolysis, or hemorrhage. That's the only reasons why you have it. And you're going to see we have a slew of anemia, uh, anemia um, definitions and diseases, but they all could be categorized in one of these different ways. Okay? It's very organized. Now, I want you to think of anemia as not a, as a disease. I want you to know it as a sign. Just the way vomiting is not a disease, it's a sign of something else. So there's got to be a, some sort of underlying cause for the anemia. 
It's not, a, you know what I'm saying? It's not a disease, although it would be, but you have to think that something's causing that anemia. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? All right, so let's talk about anemias due to blood loss. Okay? So there's two problems when we're dealing with that. All right? You cut off your hand, blood is pouring out. So there's two problems. First off, you're going to decrease the oxygen carrying capacity. The red blood cells are going out, so the oxygen can't bind to anything. So we're losing that capacity. The other thing that we're losing is iron. Remember, iron gets recycled. So if you lose all that iron, you can't get it back, except you have to wait until you eat all your foods to get it back in there. Okay? Remember, 80% of the iron is in hemoglobin. 20% is in ferritin, which is in your bone marrow. So you're losing a lot. Okay? So we have those two problems. So we can break this down into two things, either an acute blood loss and a chronic blood loss. In acute blood loss, we call it dilutional anemia, because it's not really losing red blood cells. Let me show you what I mean. All right, if you decrease your blood, well, it is because you're losing the blood cells, but look, you have, if you decrease the blood pressure, then your body is going to increase albumin in the liver. Okay, so this is, uh, so you're not losing red blood cells in this way, right? You're not losing it. But when your blood pressure goes down, your liver's going to make albumin. And going back to osmotic and oncotic pressure, when you put albumin in a bloodstream, it's going to draw in fluid from your tissues. So water is going to go into your bloodstream because you just added more of these albumins here. Water is going to be put into your bloodstream, so your blood volume is going to go up. Okay? And when the blood volume goes up, it's going to increase your blood pressure. Does that make sense? Step by step. But what's going to happen is, since that water's going in, it's going to dilute the red blood cells that are there. We didn't lose any red blood cells, all right? Or we did, but the first thing that's going to happen, like if you lose, you know, if someone's, let's say, menstruating and it's a heavy, heavy period, so you're losing red blood cells there. So the first thing your body wants to do is get the blood pressure back up. That's the first thing it wants to do. Does that make sense? So that you get the blood pressure back up. Then the second thing we got to worry about is getting the red blood cells to be made. But we got to get the blood pressure back up. So what you have is basically you have like a pitcher of lemonade. You got crystals, which is the red blood cells, in the water. So I'm going to pour out 50% of that. I pour out 50%, but I'm going to pour in just water to get it back to 100. Now when you taste it, it's diluted. See what I'm saying? That's what's happening here. That's why it's called dilutional anemia during acute blood loss. All right? So this is temporary until the bone marrow can make more red blood cells. And that could take days, if not weeks. Okay? Unless you do a blood transfusion. But your body's going to try and make more red blood cells. So as it's making more red blood cells, your reticular site count has to go up. Because it's making more red blood cells. Those are immature red blood cells. Okay? We okay with understanding acute blood loss? Now let's talk about chronic blood loss, okay? Chronic blood loss, there's really two etiologies that are uh, more common. One, as I said, during abnormal menstrual bleeding, okay? So you're bleeding heavy with your menstruations, all right? Maybe you're, instead of five days, you're now bleeding 10 days. You're just losing a lot of blood that way. The other one is undetected colon cancer, which is intestinal bleeding. In this case, you're bleeding through the back end, but you don't realize it. That's why when you go for annual exams, they want to do occult a, a bleeding. In other words, they're going to take the stool, and you can't see it, but if you take some of the sample there and put it on the card and you put the spray on it, it'll test to see if there's microscopic blood cells on there. People that just don't realize that. Okay? So that's usually the two that's going on here. Okay? So you usually get the dilutional anemia first. You've got to get the blood pressure back up. But then the intestinal iron absorption can't keep up with the red blood cell loss. You've got to be eating a lot more. It's, you've got to eat a lot of iron to really get that back up. It's difficult to do that. So because of that, the iron deficiency is going to take place. So you're losing that much blood. We've got to replenish it. So these people will be on supplemental iron tablets. If they lose a lot of blood, then you get blood transfusion. Okay? So questions about chronic versus acute blood loss. Okay. 
So let's talk about anemia of chronic diseases. Okay? This is the second most common anemia in the United States next to uh, iron deficiency. Okay? It's a low output of red blood cells by the bone marrow with some sort of chronic disease. And I'll explain that in a moment. But the bone marrow mass does not expand properly with the anemia. It's going too fast. So you have this, this chronic disease that's going on, and it's whatever it's doing, it's not being able to keep up with the loss of the red blood cells with what your body is making the red blood cells. There's three mechanisms that's happening here. Either the lifespan of the red blood cells are decreasing, so instead of 120 days, now they're only lasting for 70 days. You could have some sort of red blood cell synthesis that's not functioning correctly, or just there's going to be impaired recycling of that iron. It's supposed to go from here to here, but something's blocking, something's not working properly. So, the chronic diseases that I'm looking at is cancer, um, chronic infections, and chronic autoimmune diseases, like lupus, like you have it for years and years. Okay? So what happens here is that these things are releasing inflammatory mediators. We talked about those, TNF and all these other things, right? Uh, interleukins, all those wonderful things that you learned in immune system. Well, what's happening here is that these inflammatory mediators are doing what they're, what they're supposed to do, but as a side effect, they're also doing two other things, and that's what's causing anemia with these things happening. First off, they're going to interfere with iron transportation from the storage site to where the red blood cell synthesis is. So therefore, you're going to increase ferritin, that's the storage sites inside the bone marrow, and you're going to increase that as a compensatory response. It's trying to build a bigger net. If there's not enough red blood cells or, or that's happening, then it's going to say, well, we need to create more um, ferritin. So whatever iron is out there, we got to grab, even if it's very little. So they're going to actually make more of this ferritin. The other thing that it's going to do is that it's going to interfere with erythropoietin synthesis. So when people who have these things up here, they're going to get anemia, all right, because this is anemia of chronic disease, and it's happening because these diseases are releasing certain inflammatory mediators that are doing these two things, and that's what the cause of, of happening, what's what the cause is happening, okay? See, what's happening is that if someone's got anemia of chronic disease, they're going to have an increase of ferritin. But if someone's got iron deficiency, then their ferritin is going to be very low because there is no iron there. Does that make sense? The person doesn't have any iron coming in. All right, and we'll talk about that with iron deficiency. So symptoms of this uh, anemia of chronic disease. You'll get the symptoms of that underlying disease, whether it's lupus or whichever autoimmune disease or cancer that there is. But other things that will happen is that you're going to have microcytic hypochromic red blood cells. Hmm, what is that? Okay. If this is what a normal red blood cell looks like, looks like a donut, right? This is really not a hole here, right? It's kind of shaped. If you take a cross-section of it, It'll look like this. I thought the sizes. What is? Of the, um, of the urethra sites. What is the sizes? The normal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I was trying to explain over here. Yeah. So what's happening here, this is what a normal red blood cell looks like. And it's thin here because as light comes through here through a microscope, it can't go through here. But it can pass right through here quite easily. So that's why it looks like there's a hole there. It's just that there's light going through a very thin area. So there's no hole there, per se. But in a person who's got microcytic hypochromic, microcytic tells you, like you said, they're smaller. And over here, it looks like a donut, I understand. But you have a lot of meat over there. But what happens in this case is that there's less meat. So it becomes this area here is the only place that has 
that ring. In other words, the paler area becomes a lot wider. We call that hypochromic. So they have a wider white spot in the center, but the cell itself is also small. So that's why we call it microcytic, small, hypochromic. It becomes uh, less red. It becomes more pale. And that's what that is. If it looks completely normal, then we call it normal cytic red blood cell. So it has less hemoglobin, or it depends, that's the hemoglobin. It depends, it depends. Mm -hmm. Okay? Also, you'll get an increase of iron in the bone marrow. Okay? Because there's nothing wrong with the, you're not losing red, you're not losing red blood cells. It's just the mechanism, is the inflammatory mediators is doing something to the function of carrying the red blood or the iron. Okay? So you're going to decrease the iron in the blood because there's problems. Get, there's going to be a lot of iron in the bone marrow, but there's a problem getting the bone marrow from the, from the I'm sorry, getting, uh, there's a problem to get the iron from the bone marrow and putting it into the bloodstream. So there's going to be an increased amount in the bone marrow, a decreased amount in the blood. You'll have an increased amount of ferritin inside the bone marrow. There's going to be a lot of ferritin that's going to hold on to all this iron. But there'll be a decrease of transferrin. These are the little buses that are driving in the bloodstream. This is not going to be much iron over there. Does that make sense? You see, you're, you're putting it all together. All right? If you understand the concept, there isn't much memorization that's going on. Treatment is that you've got to treat the underlying cause, whatever that is, lupus, whatever it is. Give them EPO, erythropoietin, to try and get more red blood cells being made and put iron on them. So there's, you're giving them more iron so that it can go into the bloodstream. Okay? Really quick about aplastic anemia. This is also known as primary bone marrow failure. So what's happening here is that the primary site, there's something wrong. Where red blood cells are being made is in the bone marrow. So in there, that's what's being destroyed. So you get a loss of set of Stem cells. Now, this, is, this name is a misnomer, and I don't want you to fall for it. It's a aplastic anemia, which makes you think it's just anemia. It's not. What happens here is that your bone marrow gets destroyed by chemotherapy, radi radiation, autoimmune diseases, viruses. The bone marrow gets destroyed. And what happens here is that all the cells, the stem cells, get, they die. They fail. So we have something called pancytopenia meaning that the red blood cells are not being made, the white blood cells are not being made, and then platelets are not being made. So aplastic anemia is a misnomer. It's not just anemia, it's all of this. And they usually die from hemorrhage or infection. Why? Why would they get a lot of infections? Why would they get a lot of hemorrhage? Think about it. Right. No white blood cells, no platelets. See what I'm saying? It's like if you understand what aplastic anemia is and this, you can figure out what's going on. They'll also get anemia, but they're not going to die from that. They'll slow down, but this is what they usually die of. Right? See? Put it all together. It's not hard. Okay?